Hi, Lee Ellis here with your monthly Leading with Honor coaching. You know, I always like to pick something that's relative, and I think this month we have something very relative, one, to the new year, and two, relative to every individual. It's really about power struggles. It's really about fear. You know, we've just come through a season of good cheer, but we also know that as we face the new year, we have lots of ideas, we may have some resolutions, But in the background, we have doubts and fears lurking there. And those doubts and fears can cause us a lot of problems. You know, the reality is that we actually have fears that we don't even know about and acknowledge. And they really surface themselves. We see them in power struggles. Now, you say, well, I'm not in a power struggle. Well, if you find yourself trying to be right in a certain situation, and the other person is trying to be right, then that's what I would call a power struggle. And they're not so easy to break. In fact, you just kind of go round and round and round. One behavior causes another feeling, which causes the other person to have a behavior, which causes a feeling, and it's like the cat chasing its tail, and it gets stronger and stronger. Well, dealing with that is really about finding the fear underneath. And I'll tell you what I think the fear is. I think the fear is that I'm going to lose out, that I'm going to be vulnerable, I'm going to be taken advantage of, and then I'm going to lose. And so what we try to do is put on more power, put in more knowledge, more information, show you that I'm right. You see, here it is. I'm right and you're wrong. And that only stokes the power struggle even more. So for the new year, what I want you to do is think about how can you take ownership for your own part Instead of being fearful about being humble, I want to challenge you to have courage to be humble. Focus on yourself. You can't change the other person. Focus on everything that you can own in that struggle that could possibly be your responsibility and look inward. And as you start to focus on yourself rather than the other person and focus on that with humility and then take ownership verbally with this person that this is really your problem. And there's ways that you can improve in this situation, ways you can do things better. All of a sudden, the other person starts to back up and look a little differently. It's really like judo. It's kind of counterintuitive. You know, judo, you're pushing against the other person. But if you step back and they're pushing against you, they fall on their face if they don't do something different. So it's very counterintuitive, but very powerful when you can take ownership for the parts that you might play. And even though they might be small, make them seem big and work on those because you really can't change another person. But you can change your dynamics with them by how you perform and how you act and even in your attitude because they pick up on your attitude. So the challenge of dealing with our fear is to want to acknowledge that we have a fear of being taken advantage of. We have a fear of being humble. We have a fear of being vulnerable. But I'll tell you, instead of power, Try humility. Humility is so powerful. And when you're humble, you free others up around you to be humble. As long as you're trying to be strong and putting, pushing out strength, 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 I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, people are going to push back on you. But when you're humble and you take ownership for your part in that struggle, other people are freed then to relax a little bit and to start to look at themselves. They may or they may not. You can't determine that. But the one thing we do know is you can't control them, and the only person you can control is yourself. So the antidote to fear is really humility. Humility is kind of a a love of yourself. It may sound weak, but humility requires a great deal of love of yourself. You know, we came out with the uh, leadership engagement model, which looks at it slightly different, but it's the exact same thing. Most of us When we are confronted with fear and anger and disappointment or our pride, our hubris, we either try to dominate or we withdraw. And really, neither one of those works. What we want to do is get in the middle and engage out of confidence and humility and work through something and do our part to make things work. That's so powerful when we can engage rather than try to dominate or withdraw. Now, I'm telling you this from personal experience. I know in my life, in my marriage, as a parent, I've been in a lot of power struggles, and I'm a slow learner. But take it from me, taking, being humble and learning to take that on, take that responsibility, and engage with yourself 
and work through your own emotions to get to positive emotions is very, very powerful. You know, I really like the, the, some of the work that the Arbinger Institute has done on this. Uh, they've got a couple of good, really good books there. If you look at Arbinger Institute online, you'll find some great information. And I love one of their quotes that I'll share with you now in closing. No conflict can be solved so long as all parties are convinced they're right. Solution is possible only when at least one party begins to consider how it might be wrong. So look at yourself first. Be humble. It's so powerful to be humble. It's counterintuitive, but the strength is there. And when you're strong by being humble, you free others to do the same thing. And that's very powerful. That's how we live and lead with honor. That's how we engage with honor. And I hope you'll give it a try in this new year.